Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Backbrace channel. My name is Amir and in this quick tutorial, we're going to build a blockchain from scratch using gross programming language. You can expect to see real time simulations of transactions using our virtual Bitcoin. And that includes how new blocks are added and secured with cryptographic hashes. I'm going to demonstrate the role of nonces to ensure the security and uniqueness of each transaction, essential for preventing any security breaches. Without further ado, let's jump right into the demo and start coding. All right, so I'm inside the projects folder. Let me do cargo run. You can see here uh, down below, it says, welcome to Bitcoin mining simulator. Enter your miner name, I'm here and I will hit enter. And now you can see clearly that there is a new block is created with the transaction data. You can see uh, mining block one, two, three. These are the names of the traders. So the transaction involves sending the virtual currency, which is the Bitcoin from the current sender uh, to the current recipient. So it started by uh, Amir, for instance, and sending to Linda and from Linda to John and so on. And it gets back at the end to Amir. OK, so these are um, eight blocks. Um, I've just specifically designed it this way. So in total, there are nine blocks. If we'll not consider the Genesis block, the first one. Um, so there is the Genesis block and then starting the blocks, right? So mining in progress with the hash number and the transaction goes from Amir sent to Linda and the mining more, which means that we are solving some mathematical puzzles, uh, mining in progress. And then there is a transaction sending the Bitcoin from Linda to John. And finally, here we have got the number of Bitcoins traded. Simulation ended at so the time and the date and congrats mining operation completely successful. So in this tutorial, we're going to see the blockchain structure, mining blocks, transaction simulation and generation and so on. With that being said, let's go ahead, roll up our sleeves and start coding. All right. So let me go first to the folder where I want to create my project. So I need to go here then here and then I want the uh, YouTube that's and let's go to rust and let me go to a folder called block chain underscore sim all right and now I want to create my project so I'm going to use cargo new blockchain right now we have our project blockchain. And let's go ahead and open that with Visual Studio Code. Um, before we get started, I know you guys love um, the themes that I use. So this one is called Doom Emacs. Um, first of all, if uh, let me just do like that. Welcome to Bitcoin mining simulator. We'll do like this and we'll do cargo run. Okay, we'll get welcome to Bitcoin mining simulator. All right, so let's just push that to the bottom. We don't need that now. And the first thing that um, I want to do is to import the necessary dependencies. dependencies. Right, so these are the dependencies that we need. The SHA-256 hashing algorithm, the formatting utilities, which is the FMT, the time related utilities, the system time and the Unix underscore epoch, the thread, which is threading utilities essentially, and finally the duration utilities. But first, let me go ahead and um, just write all that in the dependencies here in cargo.toml. I only need the SHA-2 and Chrono. And as you may guess that the Chrono is used for the daytime utilities. Okay, Chronometer. Okay, so let's close that for now. Let's save this. Let's close the Explorer and let's continue. So the next thing that I want to do is to define the structure of a block in the block chain. So I will need a struct called block and an implementation called block as well. But before that, I want to define the difficulty of the mining. So maybe I can come here above and do define difficulty of the mining. And just so we're clear, difficulty refers to the level of complexity required for miners 
to add a new block to the blockchain successfully. So in most blockchain networks, such as Bitcoin, for instance, the process of adding a new block involves solving a mathematical or computational puzzle. And the difficulty of this puzzle, by the way, is adjusted over time to ensure that blocks are added to the blockchain at a relatively constant rate, typically every 10 minutes for Bitcoin. Every 10 minutes for Bitcoin, the difficulty of this puzzle is being adjusted. So as we said, we need a struct and implementation. So this is our block struct. It has an index of the block in the chain. It has a hash of the previous block. It also has the timestamp for uh, the block creation, data stored in the block, of course, nonce used for mining and hash for the current block. Also, we need an implementation. You can see here that currently there are zero implementations, but we're going to change that right now and we're going to write our implementation. So here we have our block implementation. First, we have a constructor for creating a new block. As you can see, the inputs here are index, previous hash and data. And the, uh, the result is going to be a block. Next, we want to get the current timestamp in seconds since we're using the Unix epoch and the block is going to set different elements and initialize others. So we're going to set the index previous hash timestamp and data and we're going to initialize nonce and hash. Nonce is going to be initialized to zero and hash is going to be initialized to an empty string. So as we have our block struct and implementation out of the way, we need to create a method to calculate the hash of the block and the calculate hash will return a string and you can find here at the end there is the hash underscore stir and you see here that the last line doesn't have a semicolon because we said before that Rust evaluates to the last line and returns whatever the last line is going to evaluate to. Okay, so let data equal to format. So what we're doing here is that we're formatting the string with index previous hash, timestamp, data, and nonce. And simply what we're doing here in data that we're concatenating the block attributes into a single string. So that's the whole idea here. We are concatenating the index, previous hash, and so on into a single string. And next here, we're creating a SHA-256 hasher, and we're going to update it with the block data. Then this result is going to be uh, just formatted inside that hash stir, and then we're going to return it. The last method in the block implementation is mine block with visual effects. And it does exactly that. It's a method to mine the block with visual effects. So first we're initializing iterations counter by saying let mute iterations equal to zero. And then we're going to use the loop. So we're going to calculate the hash of the block. Then we're going to increment iterations counter. We're going to check if the hash meets the difficulty requirement. Then we're going to print a message indicating the successful block mining. And finally, we're going to break out of the loop or exit the loop. And if the iterations exceed a certain limit, we're going to print the calculated hash and pause for visual effect. And then the last thing, we're going to increment the nonce for the next iteration. So that's as far as the implementation of the block itself. Now we want to implement the formatting of the block structure to allow printing. And to do that simply, I'm going to create a format function and that's going to exactly do that. We're going to format the output. So just to be clear, this is an implementation of the format display trade for the block structure. All right. This implementation defines how a block instance should be formatted when it is displayed. So this is the format function. It takes as first parameter um, a reference to self. F, which is a mutable reference to format or formatter, and it returns a formatted result. Let date time equals to chrono naive date time. In this statement, simply we are converting the timestamp to date time. And finally, we are using the write macro to format the block information. It actually writes the block index, data, and timestamp to the formatter F. And the placeholders here are replaced with the corresponding values self.index, self.data, and date time. And we are done with the block. Now let's go ahead and create the blockchain structure. And of course, we start that with the struct keyword blockchain. And inside curly braces, we have a vector to hold blocks in the chain. And then we will code the implementation for the blockchain. So we will have a constructor for creating a new blockchain with the Genesis block. Then I'm initializing the chain with the Genesis block. Then I need two additional functions, one to add a new block to the blockchain. And the other one is to get the total number of blocks in the blockchain. So the add block function basically adds a new block 
to the blockchain. So to implement that, I'm going to get the hash of the previous block. Then I will set the previous hash of the new block. I'm going to mine the new block. And finally, I'm adding the mine block to the chain. As far as get total blocks function, this simply as the name suggests, gets the total number of blocks in the blockchain. And we are done with everything with blockchain and block from implementation to structures. Now let's go ahead and start coding inside our main function. So it has come down to this, the main function for the blockchain simulation. The first print line is a welcoming message. Next, we're asking the user to enter their name. Then the system is going to read the line, the input of the user. Then we have minor name, which is equal to minor name dot trim dot string. And that simply trims the white space from the input. Next, what I want to do is to initialize a list of imaginary trader names. So you've got Bob, Linda, John, Omar, Eve, Svetlana, Grace and Jiro. So they are eight names plus your ninth name to have nine blocks in our blockchain. Next, I'm initializing a new blockchain by saying let mute Bitcoin equals to blockchain new. Then we're printing a message to the user telling them let's start mining and simulating transactions. Then I'm going to create a string variable sender, which equals to minor underscore name dot clone. So in Rust, variables usually have ownership semantics. We've explained that before. So uh, to make things simple for you, these variables represent ownership of the data they hold. So when you assign a value to a variable, that variable becomes the owner of the value, right? Pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So ownership ensures memory safety, okay? And it prevents also data races. And the way it does that is just by enforcing some strict rules about how data can be accessed and modified. So when we say let mute sender equals to minor underscore name dot clone, the first part of this expression, let mute sender, declares a new mutable variable named sender. And this mute keyword that we have seen many times indicates the variable can be mutated, right? It can be changed over time. Now the most important part, which is the second part of the expression, minor underscore name dot clone. Minor underscore name is a string, right? Now I've mentioned all that to come to this, the clone method. This is a method provided by the string type in Rust that basically creates a new string instance that is exact copy of the original string. So it does what it says. It clones an exact copy of the original string. So this is genius because basically this new instance will have its own memory allocation and will be independent totally from the original. Next, we're going to iterate through the trader names. Okay, so for i in zero trader names dot len, that's pretty simple. We're going to print. So for each name, we're going to print that statement. Then I'm going to determine the recipient here by enforcing a condition. If i is less than trader names dot len minus one, the trader names i plus one. So we're going to iterate that by one else minor underscore name dot clone, which means that the last transaction goes back to the minor. So if you have noticed that I started with Amir or your name, and it will end with your name as well. Next, I'm going to create a transaction message, then a new block with the transaction. And then we're going to add the mine block to the blockchain while printing the transaction message. And then we're going to update the sender for the next transaction. All right. And simply here, we're going to print a new line for spacing. As far as the total blocks here, we're going to calculate the total blocks added to the blockchain. Then I'm going to print them in a statement, total blocks added to the blockchain and whatever the total blocks are. Here are of course predefined, they are total nine blocks. And then I'm going to set the Bitcoin per block. This is the price of one Bitcoin, 137. And then I'm going to multiply that by the number of total blocks to get the total Bitcoin traded. Then I'm going to print it. And then I'm going to get the current timestamp. So that's the end timestamp. And then I'm going to convert the timestamp to date time. And then I'm printing that date time. And finally, we're going to just print a congratulation message. That's the end of our application. And here just I forgot to add the naive that's giving me a hard time. Now that squiggly red line has disappeared. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to open the integrated terminal. I will do cargo run compiling. Okay, enter your name, let's say John Doe. And mining mining block one, then mining in progress with the calculated hash. 
and um, so we have the current hash, the previous hash, different blocks, the transactions sent from a user to, or a trader to trader. It started by John Doe and finally on block 8, that's going to end with John Doe as well. Total blocks added to the blockchain 9 and so on and so on. All right, so I hope this was useful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and be well. See you later, guys.